A warm welcome to this study day for St. Bennett's Church, Cambridge. We're delighted to have Father Simon Cuff with us for the 10th of October, 2020, speaking about Catholic social teaching. These videos are going up on YouTube in advance of that day and will remain on our channel for public use. Be sure to join in a live Q&A session on Zoom on the 10th of October. Details on our website. That may also go up on our YouTube channel in due course. Father Simon Cuff is a tutor and lecturer in theology at St. Melitus College. He studied philosophy, theology, and Jewish studies at the University of Oxford. He served as curacy and was then priest in charge in Ealing Broadway in West London. And then just last year, he published a book with SCM Press entitled Love in Action, Catholic Social Teaching for Every Church. Another book has just come out with SCM this summer, Only God Will Save Us, The Nature of God and the Christian Life. We're very much looking forward to what Father Simon will share with us through these videos. To find out more about our formation and teaching program and how you might take part, please visit our website at www.stbennettschurch.org or send an email to the vicar. Hello, it's great to uh, be with you at uh, St. Bennett's for this virtual um, series of study sessions. I'm sorry that I am not able to be with you in person, uh, and I look forward to uh, meeting some of you on Zoom. I hope over three 15-minute uh, videos to introduce to you um, some of the basic uh, principles in what's known as Catholic social teaching. We'll be exploring a little bit about what Catholic social teaching is, and why we as Anglicans might be interested in what's become known as Catholic social teaching. The three sessions will look at different principles of Catholic social teaching and begin to ask a little bit more about what it might look like to apply those principles um, in our Christian lives and in what we do together um, as church. Uh, broadly speaking, the first session will look at a general introduction to Catholic social teaching and consider uh, its foundational principle. Uh, the second section will look at some of the consequences of that foundational principle for uh, relationships between people. And the third session will look at some of the consequences um, of that foundational principle for how we order ourselves as Christian people and as society. Catholic social teaching has been uh, referred to many times as uh, the Catholic Church's best kept secret. When Justin Welby was announced as Archbishop of Canterbury, um, he was asked to uh, speak about his influences and um, he named at that press conference uh, Catholic social teaching as being an important resource for his ministry. And throughout his ministry as Archbishop, we can see a number of points where Catholic social teaching has inspired him to act in certain ways. His address, for example, at the Trade Union Congress, um, which came to su a surprise to some, is an example of the outworking of the principle of subsidiarity, which we'll, we, we'll, we will consider uh, later. Um, the idea that small and intermediate groupings like trade unions, but also faith institutions, schools um, and other groups of um, people are an important part of a healthy and flourishing society. So it's no surprise if... Um, someone interested in Catholic social teaching uh, says that trade unions are an important thing because of, of this principle. Um, in his book, Reimagining Britain, Justin Welby tries to apply some of the insights of Catholic social teaching to some of the problems of contemporary Britain. Um, and that's something I think uh, which we can begin to think about throughout the course of our time together today. Um, in that Reimagining Britain, Justin Welby describes Catholic social teaching as the applied outworking of the good news of Jesus Christ in terms of social structures and social justice, a series of brilliant reflections on the nature of a functional and just society. What I want to do briefly in this first video is uh, introduce Catholic social teaching to you, tell you very briefly some of its history and its origins before thinking through the foundational principle, which is really the principle on which all of the other principles of Catholic social teaching rests. That is the principle of the inalienable dignity of the human being. Catholic social teaching um, started life uh, under Pope Leo XIII um, in a, 
uh, an encyclical known as Rerum Novarum, uh, of New Things, in 1891. And this is really seen um, as the start of Catholic social teaching. In that encyclical, Pope Leo draws a number of threads together that had been emerging through Catholic thought in previous years. And the reason why it's seen as a starting moment, and other encyclicals are dated um, after it, in re recognising that it was the start of this movement, is that it's the first time that the Catholic Church had really addressed itself uh, in the modern era, era to uh, some of the questions that had arisen as a result of industrialization a growing urban population, many of them Catholic, most of them poor, um, and um, and the the consequences for industrialization uh, on uh, European and Catholic society and Catholic Christians in those uh, increasingly industrialized European societies. One of the reasons why Pope Leo sees the need to, um, to speak out is that the the church was finding itself squeezed between two opposite forces. On the one hand, um, capitalists who were uh, instrumentalizing people in this ever-seeking uh, quest for wealth in the uh, industrialization of, of Europe, and on the other hand, uh, communists who were arguing against property and uh, religion and were saying that the accumulation of property by capitalists and in the name of capital uh, was destroying society. Both groups had their followers. There was also the uh, rising tide of fascism uh, and nationalism. Um, and the church and Pope Leo were worried that uh, a Christian witness was being lost to these competing narratives of secular salvation. You can be saved through uh, capital, you can be saved uh, through the abolition of property, and you can be saved without reference uh, to Jesus Christ. And in um, Rerum Novarum, Pope Leo attempts to offer a remedy uh, for the social ills that other groups in society are offering uh, secular remedies for. And he says a number of things in that encyclical. One of the um, things he says is that uh, workers should be paid a fair wage. Um, they should be paid enough, not just a wage that the market can afford, but they should be paid enough for um, a person working, typically at that time a man, to be able to look after his family and to have a dignified um, life, including time for worship, including uh, social time, and that wages shouldn't be um, uh, poverty wages. Um, he says a number of other things too about how society is ordered, um, but fundamentally what he's trying to do is to speak into the reality of the social ills of the day and to ask what the, um, what the teaching of the church has to say about the nature of society. And in doing so, um, he begins with the uh, idea that each and every human being is... Um, uh, has an inalienable dignity given to them by the fact that they are a creature of God, cre a creation of God, created in God's image and saved through Christ. And it's really both that uh, human beings are created by God in Christ's image and that they are saved by God through Christ that are the twin theological underpinnings to the concept of human dignity which is at the foundation of Catholic social teaching. So Pope Leo in Rerum Novarum doesn't just argue for a, a just or fair or living or family wage because it's the right thing to do. Rather, he says that uh, it's the right thing to do because it befits the dignity of, um, of being a human being. P Pope Leo and uh, most of Catholic social teaching tends to come from a background of um, theology which is um, very much uh, steeped in uh, the Thomist theology of Thomas Aquinas. And so um, we see in Rerum Novarum an argument for the living wage based on a notion of, of justice, of, uh, of right, um, that as a human being, uh, I am endowed with a certain right, a certain um, uh, expectations of what I can expect to uh, 
how I can expect to be in relationship with human beings around me that means that um, certain consequences flow from that right. So I deserve to be paid a living wage because um, if you extract labour from me and don't pay me fairly, um, the relationship between us is unjust. Um, and for Thomas Aquinas, relation, uh, justice is, is f uh, fundamentally a relationship that we are uh, to relate well to each other, properly to each other. Um, and when we are pulled out of that relationship through sin, that's injustice. It's about the right ordering, the right relationship of society. Biblically, this concept of human dignity um, comes from um, both the beginning of Genesis, our creation in the image of God in Genesis, um, and from reflecting on the incarnation, particularly that scene uh, in Matthew 25, um, where you did it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me, a sense that we need to treat each and every human being as if uh, they are someone who Christ considered worth saving, as if they are Christ themselves. Now, most of the um, uh, following principles of Catholic social teaching flow from a reflection on how do you act in accordance with the promotion of the inalienable, inalienable dignity of uh, each and every human being, um, and, and what do you need to put in place in order to promote actions which recognise each and every human being as the uh, dignified human being that God has created them to be. And these principles are um, stemming from the foundational principle of um, human dignity. These principles are the common good, a notion of solidarity, subsidiarity, the concept of social or structural sin, and the preferential option for the poor. Now, these principles are almost like a, um, a Russian doll interlocking uh, from that foundation on of the inalienable dignity of uh, humankind. Um, and it's worth probably briefly saying that it's not a surprise that the, this tradition um, worked out through various documents and uh, conciliar pronouncements over the 20th century, um, arrived at principles as a means uh, to, to convey this teaching. Um, one of the reasons why uh, this body of teaching has arrived at these principles is that it, this isn't just an academic pursuit, it's um, meant to inspire action. It's meant to inspire action that better promotes the dignity of each and every human being. And so these principles help people who are living ordinary Christian lives uh, to think through their action quickly and to give them a series, a series of principles which are more likely than not to promote the dignity of each and every human being. It's worth also saying that this isn't just for Christians, and indeed it's especially not just for Roman Catholics. One of the features of um, these, uh, the documents which make up Catholic social teaching, the various uh, encyclicals and uh, other documents, is that increasingly over the course of the 20th century, they move from merely being addressed to the Catholic clergy and faithful, uh, and increasingly are addressed to all people of goodwill. And this stems partly from a realisation that um, if you're wanting to bring about a more just uh, society that's ordered more in accordance with God's will for the world, um, you need to work together with those people who may not necessarily identify uh, as Roman Catholic or as Christian. And so in order to bring about um, a society in which the dignity of all human beings is recognised and can flourish, you need to work with all people of goodwill. Um, the final thing really I want to say in this introductory um, video is that this is a tradition which is still evolving. Um, Pope Francis has taken Catholic social teaching in a certain direction in Dandato Zai. He's really um, uh, promoted the notion of our custody of creation, our care for creation, our stewardship for creation and the environment as an essential part of the promotion of human dignity. Um, and we'll see uh, in the next session how he's linked these two themes um, in relation to his, our response to the current crisis that we're living through uh, in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, and also that some of the foundational notions of Catholic social teaching, which Pope Leo um, 
was very keen to highlight themselves have undergone a, a shift as um, as the context in which the um, this promotion of human dignity occurred shifts. And so why, whereas Catholic social teaching begins as a very European pursuit, um, over the course of the 20th century, it increasingly becomes uh, uh, something which has got the whole world in its focus, something which is increasingly in the 20th century concerned with relationships not just within nations but between nations, um, and more recently under Pope Francis, thinking about actually that as Christians, we are all uh, inhabitants of a planet, uh, and uh, as, as we're living through a current environmental crisis, um, it matters that we uh, consider responses which are not just within nations or between nations, uh, but are truly uh, transnational as we're, um, and global as we're uh, facing some global um, problems. So a question I want to leave you with, uh, having introduced the concept of human dignity, is how um, do you in your uh, community um, discern and promote the particular means of flourishing of each and every human person with whom you come into contact? How does your context promote the dignity of each and every human being?